must admit, it's Sunday morning. There's no AFL footy and Collingwood are out of the finals. I'm just getting a little bit nervy and a bit edgy with what I'm going to do with my day. So I've jumped the gun and I want to go early on Collingwood's list management and their best 22 for 2025. So let's dig right into it straight away. And let's talk about some of the predicted delistings that I think are possible in the very near future. I've gone with Lockie Sullivan and Jack Bytel. And we already know Aiden Begg has been delisted. So I think that is probably the baseline. I think we can expect another two players to be delisted from the final squad. Lockie Sullivan looks, he looked good coming into his AFL journey. But as we saw the, the game go on, he sort of lost himself a little bit, was a little bit behind the pace of the game, and his decision-making wasn't quite up to scratch. So for those reasons, I'm going to say he gets delisted. And then Jack Bytel, the reason why I'm going with Jack Bytel is because of some of the decisions I've made bringing players in from other clubs, and I don't think there's room for Jack Bytel if these players are to come through and have an impact for the club. So Lucky Sullivan and Bytel, the midfield stocks, while we are lacking, we aren't necessarily looking for their calibre of players right now. But hey, at the end of the day, this is just a prediction. It's a hypothetical. I want you to let me know. By the time this is all said and done, I want you to put your thoughts in the comment section and, and give me your best list management version for 2025. Trades. So I think... We can only assume that Joe Richards goes to Port Adelaide on a long contract, and I think Kong will get pick 37 in exchange for Joe. Port have pick 37 and pick 54 in draft. So they don't have a lot to work with. So, and I, I don't Richards is not worth a first round draft pick. So we'll see how that one ends up working out for both sides. But that's probably me playing the playing conservatively for both sides of the parties. And then John Noble and Pack Fifty get or Pick Fifty get bundled together for Pick Twenty and Alex Davies from Gold Coast. Collingwood can play hardball if they want in this situation with Noble still in contract till the end of next year. And we know Gold Coast are looking for someone to pair up Daniel Rioli with, and John Noble plays that perfect dance partner. We've seen it work really well in the last four weeks for Collingwood and Josh Dacos paired with John Noble. And then Alex Davies coming in is a relatively untried, unproven, big-bodied midfielder, but it's something we need and has probably just fallen out of favour at a club that has a really good midfield in Anderson, Miller and Rao. Arguably one of the best midfields when it comes to that centre bounce in the league. So there is a an opportunity for Alex Davies and we don't know what his ceiling is like and there are good raps about him around the league. He's just at the wrong place at the wrong time, it seems. My left field trade is Nathan Kruger to Essendon for Jaden Laverde. We know Collingwood need a key position defender to help out Darcy Moore. Kruger seems like he's somewhat on the outer. He wasn't selected for that game against Melbourne where we had no key tools. They ended up going with Darcy Cameron and Mason Cox to roll through as that key tool. Brody Majacek and Dan McStay were both not available. And Kruger was available for the last few weeks and wasn't considered. I would love to see Kruger played in the back line instead of bringing over someone Laverde, and if that happens, great. But there, there are talks that Essendon are also looking for someone to pair up with Nate Caddy. Peter Wright isn't quite doing it for Essendon right now. And then Carl Lankford is really, traditionally, should be your third key tall forward. So Nathan Kruger it would fit their mould very well. And I think a straight swap could be reasonable. And then... As far as trades are concerned, we've got two more. We've got pick 48 in our current draft for Denver Granger Barras at Hawthorne, who is fighting for a spot. Once he comes back from his ACL, we'll be fighting with Josh Battle, Tom Barras, James Sisley, and Jack Frost. It's not happening. It's really not happening. I think he needs a fresh start. Come to Collingwood. Hey, Hawks, don't delist him. We'll give you pick 48 if you hold on to him, and we can, we can make that swap happen. So I think that's a, a quite a possibility. And while he may not get into the squad straight away, he's played AFL footy. He's played AFL footy. Let me double check how many games Devin Grager Brass has played. But he, he's had some opportunities before he did his knee and was probably going to be starting for the Hawks 
at the start of the season had he not done his knee. He's played 28 games since 2021, coming as pick number six from the 2020 draft. So there's a lot of potential there. And I would be over the moon if Collingwood can get someone like Denver Granger Brass over to the Collingwood Football Club and letting him flourish. I mean, there's a serious opportunity there, and I love that. And then we also look to get someone like Tim Membry as an unrestricted free agent. All we owe to the to him is a salary. We don't have to trade because he's a uh, contract status or agency status being an unrestricted free agent. So just need to give him a salary. Does he accept four or five hundred and has an opportunity to play for a big club and maybe have a deep run in the finals? That's probably something Membry is weighing up right now. So that is the trade window done. And then we move into the draft with pick 32 and pick 20 for John Noble. I've got pick 32. We select Thomas Sims from the Northern Knights. A really good prospective key tool forward from the draft. You can't say that's something we've had in uh, a long time. So yeah, Northern Knights, 200 centimetres tall. He kicked seven goals against the Chargers and five goals against the Western Jets in the Coates Talent League. 22 goals in 11 games, reckless, contested mark beast, pinch hints at a rack, and it seems like he has a good tank and has a great kicking action as well, which goes a long way at the top level, of course. And then with pick 20, I've gone for Cooper Hines, who's a bigger bodied midfielder. He's projected to go around the 20 mark. I must admit, I haven't done a whole lot of research into the top 20 because we've been out of that conversation for such a long time, giving up our future first to Fremantle. So for now, I'm just going to settle with Cooper Hines, have a, have a look, do some research. I watched some videos of him on online. He looks okay, but I can't really make any more assessments further than that. But other than I would like us to use both those picks in the draft. Okay, now, best 22. So let's start with the back line. We're going to go Jeremy Howe, Darcy Moore, Maynard, all locks, of course. And then the other lock is Josh Dacos. And then we have Harry Demetia pairing up with Jacos and Jaden Laverde playing as that key defender with Darcy Moore. So that's your back six right there. And I think Harry Demetia is the one who is hoping to, or we're all hoping that can replace Noble if Noble does choose to go to Gold Coast. And he had a great consistent year in the VFL and depending on how his off-season, pre-season goes, he really could be in that conversation going into round one next year. And the reason why I say that as we transition over to the wing and centre and other wing, I've got Quainer on one of the wings with Scott Pendlebury as a centre and Crisp on the other side. With Quainer moving to the wing, we have room for Harry Dimitri, a really good ball user off the half-back line to come into the team. I think you can't have Quainer there instead of Harry Demetia. We need two good ball users and that's Jacos and Harry Demetia. Jeremy Howe does well. Braden Maynard's okay with the ball. Darcy Moore can be suspect at times and Jaden Laverde is there purely to be a get the job done type of guy on whoever he's playing on and allow Darcy Moore to play more freely. So Quainor on the wing, we saw that work in bits and pieces in some of the games that he was tried. In that Melbourne game, he played, he referred back to the, the back line because we were allowing Ed Allen to play in the middle and that eventually pushed Crisp to the wing and would push Quaynor to the back line. So you sort of get an idea of where I'm, where I'm, where I'm going with all of this moving forward because now you can see Crisp on the wing. Scott Pendle being a centre is an obvious one, but Crisp on the wing is just simply allowing room for some of the younger players to get more opportunity in the middle if they're ready, right? If they're ready. I'm not saying Crisp plays there full-time. I'm saying Crisp plays there... 50% of the center bounces that will say, am I in focus? Yes, I hope I am, but anyways. So there'll be a split there for Chris, but I think Chris will have to sacrifice a bit of his role to play to allow other players to play in their preferred positions, okay? And now we move to the half forward line. I've got Bo McCreary, Majacek, Elliott, and I think Bo could be one of those players who gets more time in the midfield. He, got, he, what, he had tried. They had tried Bo in the midfield this year at certain points before he got injured. 
and then coming back from that, I think he was just playing so well off the half forward line. You couldn't you couldn't play him anywhere else. So there's a little string in in his bow if he wants to, I guess, add to his game next year. The midfield opportunity is something he needs to take. He didn't quite take it with both hands this year, but it was a new learning curve for him, I would just assume, okay? We got Bobby Hill, McStay, and Membry on the full forward line. So Bobby Hill, obvious, McStay, obvious, and Membry is that third key tall forward who is playing ahead of Reef McInnes and Ash Johnson and, of course, Nathan Kruger, whether he goes to Essendon or not. That's what it looks like. This is the, the position we're looking to fill all preseason. We were always talking about Ash Johnson, Reef McInnes, and Nathan Kruger this whole preseason that's just gone by, and that not, none of them came to fruition, unfortunately, for reasons X, Y, Z. Who knows? So I think Membry really just fix, fixes that problem in the short term while we're still very competitive and probably should be in the finals. And just looking at some of the teams in the finals, I'm like, oh. Collingwood would do would have done such a better job than what some of these clubs have put out so far. But anyways, we move to the followers. We got Darcy Cameron in the ruck. That's an obvious one. Dugowie in the middle and Nick Dacos also in the middle. So no need to explain anything there. And then we have on interchange, Lockie Schultz, Mason Cox, still side bottom, Ed Allen, and Lipinski. So Ed Allen there is someone I'm hoping will be starting for Collingwood in 2025. Take that confidence from that game against Melbourne. Take the confidence in your second half of your VFL season. Take that into off-season. Walk in with the fucking a, stra- a bit of brava- bravado in the off-season, pre-season, knowing that you are a, a big hope for Collingwood and you have the confidence and the ability to to exude that and, and be that guy next year. So that's what we're all hoping for Ed Allen. After Finlay McRae, not quite working out this year so far. Where does, where's his head at next year? Does he stay? How does he perform? I'm just saying, well, I guess what I'm trying to say, Ed Allen's going to have the same pressure that Finlay McRae had this year. That's that's my that's what I what I see happening, okay? Fringe players who are going to be in the VFL and in and out of the AFL side. I've got Mitchell there first, just because of this long-term injury. I don't know where his fitness is at, how much speed does he lose. So I've got him there as well. Will Hoskin Elliott, getting a bit older, signed that one-year contract extension. He's a great, versatile player, but I couldn't fit him anywhere else. I, I mean, you guys can try, but I literally could not. With Membry there, Quaino and Crisp on the wing, I literally could not fit Hoskin Elliott in our best 22. Jacob Ryan is a question mark. He's had some inconsistencies with injuries and has been stuck in the VFL. So, and he, he plays that running defender off the half-back line as well. So keep an eye on him. Reef McInnes as well. McRae. I think it's important we keep these players in that, that 20 to 24-year-old age bracket and see if anything can come about them. Give them another year. Oscar Steen. We keep him instead of Aiden Begg. He's been injured all year, so the club obviously rates him quite highly and hopes to see AFL footy at some point. Charlie Dean, I think, is still going to be a fringe player. Alex Davies, without knowing how what his potential is like coming from Gold Coast, would have to see him in the VFL first. Ned Long, Denver Granger Brass as well, of course, and then Will Parker, who showed some positive signs and will probably rival Harry Demetia as well for that spot. So that will be uh, very, very much so I'll watch this space. And then as far as who I think will be in the VFL for the most part of next season, I'm probably saying players like Billy Frampton, Ash Johnson, who's got one more year on his contract, TJ, who I think still needs another year of development, Markov, Josh Eyre, Ilaru Smith, who's, I say he's a, a v, he's going to be in the VFL for the most part of next year, but not for the wrong reasons. Like he just needs to develop. He's got a lot of potential. I think he needs another full year in the VFL. And then our draftees and Thomas Sims and Cooper Hines. And then lastly, as far as our injured players on the long-term list would be Harvey Harrison. So we end up having 43 players on the list, including five Category A rookies and one Category B rookie. So that means we have... On the primary list, we have one. I think we have one player left to fill, 
and two or three spots regarding rookies, which will allow spots for players who have been delisted from other clubs that we can consider, and also that pre-season supplementary period and then the mid-season draft. So that's where my head is at with all this, and this is more just a bit of a <laughs> a bit of a journaling for me on a Sunday morning. Like, there's, there's nothing to look forward to as a Collingwood fan. So I'm like, well, I may as well get my head in, stuck into 2025, and yeah, see how it all goes. Go Pies.